We won't explain exactly how to perform it. We will link in forum.trainerroad.com. You'll be able to see uh, where actually Dr. Robert Chung break or forgive me, just Robert Chung, I believe. I can't remember. But Robert Chung breaks out his virtual elevation method, which people call the Chung method. Uh, Here's the basics of it. And I've tried this, and then I've also tried another format um, with AeroTune, but it's also worth noting that there are other formats that people talk about, like the, the roll-down method, where you'll basically just have a hill, and you start at a certain point, and you roll down, then you measure how far you go. Mm. Uh, they'll have other ones where you basically ride a flat portion of course, and then you measure yourself. Um, the tricky part with all of those is the fact that you, you generally have changing conditions that, that contributed to a change in time. And the Chung method tries to normalize for that. And the way that it tries to normalize for that is it has you do laps. And those laps are done on a circuit that ideally it doesn't have to be perfectly flat. It can have undulation to it to a certain degree. You don't want it to be predominantly downhill. You don't want it to be predominantly uphill, right? Uh, we're talking about a loop here. Um, it's best if it's rolling. He kind of has suggestions where he shows you where it's kind of like a middle ground thing. It's also best if there's minimal turns that you need to break for or anything else like can't that. Break. Yeah. If you break, no breaking. it's not a valid test and don't <laughs> coast that sort of a thing. So if you have turns where it's like a really, you know, a tight bend, you don't want to do that. Uh, so it's kind of tough to find a course to execute on the Chung method. And the biggest part is no wind. Yes. And that's the really hard thing well, for us. Yes. So here in Reno, it's a windy place and we deal with that. And I went out on a morning that I thought was dead calm and I did uh, a test and we'll get into this in a bit, but the data was still, it was, it was foiled by wind. Um, and I thought it was dead calm. So it's really tricky. You have to have that. Now the Chung method says that it also accounts for that to a certain degree. Um, and you can try plugging in some variables. He has like a whole formula, which we'll link to in forum.trainerroad.com. He has a formula that you can build into a spreadsheet and then you could kind of plug in some variables to try to normalize for it. But basically the way that it works is that you have a lap, you repeat that lap. It follows those parameters and you repeat it like seven times, something like that. And when you repeat this lap, it doesn't have to be super long. You bring in the data, plug in the formula, and you should see if you were to graph it, you should see a similar elevation profile across the whole thing. And he basically, when you, when you plot out the data points, if you see the elevation profile constantly tipping down or constantly tipping up, or at some point in the middle, it tipped up or tipped down for some reason, like one lap is lower than another, for example, if you see that, then it's a sign that the data is wrong. So he kind of guides you through on how to adjust it, but it's a manual process. Uh, I didn't have much success with using the Chung method and I'll get into the reasons for that in just a bit. The other method that I've tried is AeroTune. Uh, that's uh, an actual service that you can use. They have a Garmin Connect IQ app that you download and that that kind of guides you through the process as well. <laughs> And that one actually doesn't require you to have a lap or anything. It just basically has a start point and an end point. And what you do is you ride it in one direction, then you turn around and ride it in the other direction. You keep the effort consistent across both efforts, you know, when you go through that and you try to keep like, you try to enter at the same speed and you try to, you know, just keep the effort consistent from there. Uh, that one is said to be able to normalize for a lot of that and you can use their service online. Uh, but even with that, we found some problems just with minor wind and it threw things off. Now, the biggest problem though, is that most, in most cases, people aren't testing with the Chung method. They aren't going, I wonder if my TT bike is more aero than my road bike, because <laughs> the answer is yes. And in most cases that would be easy to see, but a lot of the time you see people testing, like, I wonder if I bring my head slightly down or if I go gloves or no gloves. And a lot of the time, the margin for error with this sort of test is tricky, or I should say is, is wider than the differences that you're measuring in some cases, like with just the gloves, there's a guy that went online and used this method. And he tested like the difference in diameter between like a two inch ball and like a really small one and a few different sizes in between. His name is Dr. Coggin. There we go. That's right. Well, I'm not sure. I'm almost positive. It was him who did it. He was the, yeah, he this commented on this. Is this, like this is a different one. 2007 or something. This is a different one. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, actually he commented on this guy's test and said, great job. You backed up what I did, but, uh, he tested this and he showed as it should decreasing drag for, as the ball got smaller. Mm. And you think that's a pretty small thing. So I don't know if he just had very perfect conditions for something like that. He was using the Chung, me Chung method in this case, uh, but I couldn't really replicate that. So perhaps it's me, but that's how you can do it. It's you. It's a, <laughs> it's the wind and the wind isn't constant on that course too, where you're at because it's of trees tough. and stuff. So, uh, 
that it's, just messes it all up. It's worth saying that with the arrow tune and I think the Chung method, but I know with arrow tune, they suggest that you have minimal trees that you, or at least have consistent conditions all the way yeah. across. Cause you, you know? do have some wind. It's better to have consistent wind, but this loop you had, like the backside of the loop would be no wind. And then one side of the loop, there would be wind. And yeah. And there's, uh, the other side of things too, is, uh, when you're using this, um, arrow tune method and with the Chung method, I recommend using a speed sensor instead of a GPS. Because if you just use GPS, that speed isn't very accurate as mm, to what you're yeah, doing. Sure. Especially if you have tight turns. It normalizes over time. And if you have <clears> trees <throat> or hills, it's going to really screw up that, that speed uh, when you look at it in post. So that's arrow testing stuff.